never know what to do in this little period while Instagram says, hold on, we're telling everybody you're live. And you sort of sit here thinking, what shall I do? Shall I speak? Shall I not speak? I don't know what the etiquette is. Maybe somebody can tell me what the etiquette is. <laughs> I'm not an Instagram pro, guys. That's the problem. I need your guidance. What's the time? Oh, we've got one more minute. We've had a long drive today. We arrived in France yesterday. We're on a road trip. So I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be transmitting, broadcasting from the road as we, as we go around Europe for the next couple of months. Hashtag um, digital nomad, I think it's called. So we're here in Carantan which is in Normandy and we're working our way down the coast of France and we'll be going across the Pyrenees into Spain and I'm going to be taking you with me as we go. How are we doing? Okay, we've got about 30 seconds more before we start the book. Ah, oh, so that's going to be exciting. Never done lives before on the road. Hopefully it's okay. We're all interneted up. Hopefully we'll have enough signal wherever we go. And disaster, internet disaster won't befall us. How are we doing? Okay. All right. So, um, last time we were, we read chapter five and, uh, that was all about, is anybody there? And we were reading about why we think there's no one better out there or why we never come into contact romantically with the people that we actually want to meet and the energetic reasons around that. And we talked about why if your vibration isn't right, how you will be invisible to the people who are outside that vibrationary bandwidth and how you are also invisible to them. So we're going to do chapter six today. Are you sitting comfortably? I'll begin. Chapter six, choose the relationship, not the person. This is something I bang on about all the time in my readings to people. You have to look at the relationship first, okay? because I know we get attached to people but the trouble is that your relationship is going to be intrinsic to that person so if you like the person not the relationship you better make your peace with the relationship because it probably isn't going to change so chapter six choose the relationship not the person okay wow it says here this energy work is serious stuff eh so where does all this leave us well, it leaves us with a choice. This big, beautiful vision of our ideal relationship must be constructed around just that, a relationship, not a person. Building a picture of how that relationship feels, the one you want, can be a bit of an art in itself. Now, I've had clients who have declared, I just want a normal relationship. Now, normal maybe shorthand, for that relationship being all kinds of good stuff. But there's absolutely no emotional charge in the word normal. And there's no such thing either, by the way. Now, another version went like this. I want a relationship that's good. He's got a good job and he's smart and he dresses well and he respects my career and understands me and we have stuff in common but also like our own space. He likes animals 
and it's kind okay well that's better but once again there's not much real emotion in there i mean you could have all that with a flatmate without the need for any of that messy passion stuff eh so what about this i have a partner that i am proud to be with i'm loved and cherished by him or her we are equals in this relationship and share a vision of our future together i love him or her exactly for who they are we support each other in every way possible they're as passionate about me as i am about them we're so happy we found each other life is wonderful thank you sound too good to be true well it's not Try writing your own. Fill in anything that's special for you. Try and visualize that relationship every day, making yourself smile. Of course, working out how your ideal relationship might feel can be quite a scary proposition. Feeling stupid, fears of disappointment, rejection, what is and isn't possible, all come squirming out of the woodwork. So, let's not think about it, eh? Facebook or Insta calls, I mean, you know, can't be distracted. It takes time to get serious if you're going to work some magic in your life. Energy work requires focus and commitment and for you to give clear instructions. And if you don't, you get what's showing up now. Now. To get my clients over the fear hump of actually saying what they really want, sometimes I might ask them to imagine that I'm holding a magic wand. See? Magic. And then I ask them to imagine something that will actually make them smile. Something that will make them go, whoa, that would be great. That's the relationship vision you should run with. No logic, no caution and no limitations. Now, when clients come up, also, what clients come up with is often quite a different picture to the original version. Sometimes there are even tears at this point because they've been holding in this private fantasy for so long. Now, it sounds like a game, but it works. And it makes you smile once you get into it. It's quite a fun moment, and that's the point. It's supposed to be fun. Relationships are not supposed to be miserable. Now, I'm going to shout it right now. Let's say it again with passion. Relationships are not supposed to be miserable. They're supposed to be fun and warm and happy. Look, okay, no relationship is a dream 100% of the time but a solid 75% at least now the trouble is as soon as we find someone who seems interested or we feel some energetic tingle or some resonance there as we've established we immediately jump on it and give up our happy version and try and sit it out with someone who just isn't coming up with the goods but we like them so we want it and we think it has potential that's when we must examine the resonance more closely what has shown up and why and what the actual problem is now this gets tricky when we decide they are mm, the one then they decide we're not what they were looking for. Now, there's a huge temptation to see this as a personal rejection and a sign that no one will ever want us enough to give us what we want. Remember, though, you're not the only one transmitting here. Everyone has a personal choice. Remember the potential curse? Now, instead, simply decide to let that person be exactly as they are. If they then decide they don't share your vision, you must accept it. Because in reality, 
they would never have made you happy in a thousand years. The resonance just wasn't right for them. And they didn't want what you wanted. Stay with your own version. If you feel that no one is sticking, then energetically something is active under the surface which is causing that. It's all fixable. But instead of just living the pattern and falling victim to the situation or giving up altogether, you're going to have to get under the bonnet. Get down and dirty in the engine. Now, here's a lovely story that might inspire you a bit. Molly, not her real name, had been having a terrible time relationship-wise. She was a classic wounded healer. She'd been in a long-term relationship with an older guy who treated her like his carer. Not that he needed one, he just liked it. She had never had another relationship, so dating was a pretty scary proposition. Now, in addition, Molly was now only in her thirties, but their relationship had not been physical for a decade. And she took care of not only him, but all of her extended family as well, emotionally and financially. That was her pattern. Her belief was you showed love by taking care of people because she'd been doing it since she was little. Now, even though she was clearly a wonderful, warm, caring, talented person, Molly had reached the end of her rope. She was exhausted, very sensitive about her weight, and worried about letting everyone down because they needed her. Her life had found a pattern that had her feeling trapped and powerless, and her self-esteem was pretty much at rock bottom. Changing her situation was a challenge, to say the least. But sometimes things need to get to breaking point, and Molly knew she had to make some radical changes in life if life was going to be livable moving forward. Now, Molly was a singer and a very creative individual. Using this avenue, she came up with a fairy tale a different life story in which she was happy and living with a partner of her dreams. Now, in this alternative version, everything was different. She was different. She really leaned in and decided to run with it. And one day she asked me if I wanted to see a picture of her new boyfriend. Oh, I was amazed. I said, yes, of course. And she showed me a picture of John Bon Jovi on her phone. Well, I laughed, thinking she was joking, but she said she was serious. She had decided she wanted to have a life away from everything that was currently around her, a complete shift where she was happy and she was the one being taken care of and valued by someone that got her and would support and nurture her in a wonderful way. And she decided that John Bon Jovi was the perfect avatar for her dream man. She told me how she had imagined her life in the States. Now, she took John to bed every night, putting his picture on her pillow by her. She said good night to him every night and she talked to him about her day. And she woke up with him and kissed him good morning every day. And I was a tiny bit concerned that... All this had gone a bit too far uh, into fantasy land. But she assured me she wasn't focusing on John Bon Jovi the person. She was using him as a placeholder, an avatar that represented her ideal. Now, I didn't hear any more from uh, Molly for what seemed like ages. And I'll be honest, I almost forgot about the story until we reconnected on social media. Now it turns out Molly has been living in the US for about 10 years. She's still singing. And she's married to another musician who loves her exactly as she is. Big and beautiful and warm and talented. He's the same, exactly as she ordered. John Bon Jovi, 
on the other hand, is living his life far away, blissfully oblivious to Molly and his role in her story, which is exactly as it should be and as intended. Now, this is a real story about a real person, not called Molly, but still, and a fantastic example of energy work at its most successful. What Molly did so brilliantly was to stay really clear on the picture of how her ideal relationship felt. She compared that to what was showing up in real life and swapped the realities, making the new one the one that held the most power. This gave the energy field a clear instruction of what she wanted, stating it as a fact in the present and connecting to the emotion of it as if it's real, committing fully to it, meaning that you're giving the energy the instruction that you expect to be able to step into it as a reality, not just a future potential, expressing your gratitude or your vision being fulfilled is both further confirmation of your expectation and also it's just polite. So that's our chapter for this week. Next week we're going to be looking at chapter seven which is the fear of staying the same. So we'll have a look at that in a little while. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a couple of cards about what we've just been talking about if you have a question i think all i've got is adriana at the moment adriana if you have a question jump in and ask one it's lovely to see you i wasn't here last week i was filming a documentary uh for a lovely guy called mark who's making what i think is planned to be a full-length tarot documentary and we were doing a, I think it was about three hours. I did a three hour interview and it overran massively. I wasn't watching the clock. Okay, here we are. So that's exciting. Let's have a look. So, what card are we going to choose first? Ooh! The Ten of Swords. Ten of Swords is a gruesome card, isn't it? It's a scary card. Everybody looks at the Ten of Swords and gets frightened. It's drama, isn't it? But what does it really mean? Now, swords in tarot tell us how we're using our minds. Okay? Now, they may well be predictors of a situation, but normally they're telling us what we, the way we have to think in order to perhaps sidestep this now this is no somebody's not actually going to die this is victim this is what they do this is a victim outline so this is becoming the victim of a situation or seeing yourself as the victim of a situation and i think one of the one of the reasons this card comes up for me in readings is when it's telling somebody to actually recognize their own victim role in a situation. So to acknowledge the fact that everything is not well, of course all is not well, but not to see yourself as helpless, not to see the world as being against you, right? To understand that the Ten of Swords is your, your thinking is catastrophizing, your thinking is painting you into the role of victim and that is not going to help you so yes log what you're unhappy about understand what you're unhappy about and then because it's the 10 go back to the ace new thinking is what's required and that's what we're talking about isn't it we're talking about new thinking here that's what's necessary and when we come up with the 10 of swords we're always guided back to the ace because we need insight. We need insight on what's going wrong. We need insight on the way we're thinking. And we need insight into the way that we can empower ourselves further. 
So that's interesting. What else have we got? Four of Wands. Fours in tarot are stabilize, is a stabilization number. And whenever we hit a four in any of the suits, there is the temptation to stop progressing. There is the temptation to, to just stay where we are because we're in safe territory. Now, the four of wands, as we can see here, we've got a, we've got a bell tent in the picture. So it's a place to stay, but not to live, probably. Um, the fire has got four stakes around it though, because wands are fire energy. They're our creative energy. They are our passion. So this is telling you that you've reached a point. Now, the four of, the four of wands is normally a celebrationary card. It's a good card. It's telling you that you've got to a point where you can plant your energy, where you can say, yes, it's good. But it also tells you that you can't stay there. It's almost like you've, you've come to the, it's almost like a little mini thing. You've come to the end of a phase of development and you've got to push forward. So when this comes up in relationships, it's telling you um, that very possibly you're staying in safe territory. You're, you've come to a point where you're on a plateau. Now, it's, it might be okay. What's good enough? You know, the Four of Wands is probably the least of all of the, the, the stuck four cards. It's, it's actually a, 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 a card where we, we're coming together and we're, we're celebrating where we are. Still, nevertheless, we're going to have to move on from this point. So if you're in a relationship which has plateaued or if you're at a point where you, that you're, you're struggling to move on from where you are, this four is telling you that it's probably time for you to do that. Don't just stick it out. Don't stay in safe territory. Yeah? That's good. Okay. Like that. Let's see. What else are we going to look at? Hmm. Okay. The Hanged Man. The Hanged Man in Tarot is where you're patient. You need to be patient. It's calling you to let go of your current thinking now it's interesting because we saw the ten of swords just a few minutes ago didn't we and what came up with the ten of swords is the fact that our thinking is what's causing the problem okay the way we're using our mind is causing the problem and when the hanged man appears it's asking us for patience. It's telling us that maybe there are some delays involved, but it's also telling us because um, in the life code deck here, um, the card, the hanged man to the tower advises directly on the suit of swords. And this is the ideal. This is how we approach the suit of swords. So in that waiting, we change our perspective. We are asked to let go of our stories, our personal agenda, even our ego. The hanged man is where we, we allow things to be exactly as they are. It's hanged because it's suspended. It's not hanged as in... It's not the kind of hanged it is. It's in suspension. And on the, on the more traditional decks, the hanged man is shown hanging by his ankle he's shown hanging upside down so he can see the world from a different perspective and here we've got we've got the the light and the dark and we've we've got this guy in meditation and through his meditation right he can see things differently he can see the the mirror image of what he's thinking right now so he's asking us for patience so if it feels like nothing's happening or if it feels like things are stuck, it's important to let go of the way you're thinking because the way you're thinking is probably the thing that's causing the problem. 
Okay, good stuff. Well, I think I'm going to leave it there and um, go off and get a glass of wine. Just a little bit. Just medicinal, you know. It's France. What, what's a girl going to do? So I will see y'all next Tuesday, 7 o'clock, live in Rene the Van. And um, thank you. And I will see you soon. Good night. Have a lovely evening. Bye-bye.